Hi, everyone. Good to see you all. I'm Juhan, and I will present the basic business approach in this session. So um, this is the part one of the business approach, and there will be part two in the next session, which covers some advanced version of the basic business approach. So please join the second session as well in order to get a full understanding of distance approach. So um, this session will go with the contents on the slide from describing the theoretical part of the approach to some examples and the codes. So before I start, once again, I'm Juhan Ko and I'm research apprentice at Hudson and Thames and I'm also a senior at Yonsei University. So, um, before we start, this following presentation closely follows a lot of papers regarding the topic, but the two mentioned in the slide are the most referred. <clears throat> so what is the basic concept of the distance approach? Um, as the name implies, it uses distance between stocks. So using Euclidean squared distance on the normalized price time series, price series and closest pairs are picked in the pair selection period. So in other words, stocks which have similar movement during the formation period becomes pairs for trading. Um, and after we form the pairs, we generate trading signals and trade. So if the difference between the price of elements in a pair diverged by more than a threshold, let's say like two standard deviations, then the positions are open. So the plot on the right side on the screen shows the two stocks price series which are normalized. So this was just a quick overview of the basic concepts of the distance approach. And now we'll deeply dive into two main parts of distance approach. And first is pairs formation. And the second is generating trading signals. So first pairs formation. Um, the pairs formation part is comprised of three different parts. First is normalization of the input data. Second is the pair selection. And the third is calculating the historical volatility. The first and third step is pretty straightforward compared to the second step. So I'll just briefly introduce in this slide. So in the first step, we normalize the input data using min max normalization as all the stocks have different scale of price series. So in order to compare the price movements in the next step, like pair selection and calculating history volatility, we have to set the different scale into the same. Then the pair selection, and the third is calculating historical volatility. So the reason we calculate the historical volatility in the pairs formation period is that this is needed in the trading period when we set a threshold for signal generation. So let's see the um, second step, pair selection more deeply. Um, there are four pair selection method I want to introduce today in this session. First is a method we call basing method. Um, it forms pairs with smallest distance. And this is, this is the exact same concept I discussed in the basic concept slide. It only uses um, Euclidean distance for pair selection method. Next, the second is pairs within the same industry group. This idea was introduced after the basic distance approach as the researchers thought that adding an additional criteria of industry in pair selection may help forming more profitable pairs. Therefore, these methods calculate the Euclidean square distance for each of the pair within the same group and the end closest pairs are selected. The third method is pairs with a higher number of zero crossings. And the fourth is pairs with a higher historical standard deviations. Um, compared to the method I introduced in the previous slide, these concepts are not very straightforward. So we will see some more details on these two. So the third method, um, the pairs with a higher number of zero crossings. And what is zero crossings? Um, is very simple. It is defined as the number of times the normalized spread crosses the value zero, and it measures the frequency of divergence and conversions between two assets. Then why do we use it? Why do we like use it as a method? Intuitively speaking, good candidates for trading, especially for pairs trading, are those that not only track each other well, but also exhibit frequent deviations that are subsequently reversed under the force of arbitrage. 
That being said, if a pair have a higher number of zero crossings in the formation period, we may have a higher probability of frequent divergence and convergence in the trading period as well. So then this can lead a higher profitability than other pairs with low number of zero crossings. This intuition was proved by a work by Doan Fav, 2010. And as you can see in the equation from the slide, the estimated coefficient of the zero crossings is statistically significant when predicting the return of the pairs. And this implies that the number of crossings have a positive effect on the pairs return in the trading period as well. <clears throat> Here are some examples of two pairs. So one with a higher number of crossings and the other with a lower number of crossings. As you can see, the plot on the left side, which has higher number of zero crossings, has a lot more crossings than the right side. This is very obvious, right? So this was a third method. And now let's move on to the fourth method, pairs with a higher historical standard deviation. If we look at the equation of calculating the sum of square distance of two stocks, it can be divided into two parts, as in the slide here. Therefore, if we constrain for low SSD, it is same as minimizing the sum of spread variance and squared spread mean. With a similar logic to the number of zero crossings, the variance of a pair has significant effect on the pair's return as two stocks move exactly the same way, then there will, be not any, there will not be any chance of arbitrage. However, by adding an additional criteria of variance to the pair selection, we can minimize the limitations of SSD pairs. So I introduced four different methods for pair selection, basic, industry, um, number of zero crossings, and the, um, the variance, standard deviation. So now it is time to see how we can use these pair selection method in real trading. So let's see the trading strategy. Um, trading signal generation also consists of three parts. First, we normalize the input data as we use different data set for formation and trading period. Therefore, we have to keep the scale of price series same in both of the periods. Then we create portfolios with the pairs selected. And lastly, we generate signals be, um, based on the portfolios. So let's look at the portfolios creation first as the normalization of the input data is same as the one we did in the pair selection, which is just min max normalization of the input data. <clears throat> so the portfolio creation, the step two in the trading signal generation, the portfolios are being constructed based on the stocks pairs chosen in the pairs formation step, the previous step. And the portfolio value series are difference between normalized price series of elements in a pair. <clears throat> um, the reason we construct the portfolio in this step is to see a pair of stocks in one price series by differencing the two. And below is the plot of two price series of stocks and portfolio. On the left side, is, it is a plot of two stocks in one pair. And on the right side is a portfolio price, which is this, the difference of the two stocks. Next step in trading signal generation is to generate the signals. So in order to trading, um, in order to generate the trading signals, we have to set the threshold. <clears throat> um, so this threshold is an indicator of whether or not to enter a position. And this is a threshold that we discussed and we calculated in the pairs formation part. And according to papers, which introduced this um, method, they usually use two standard deviation in the formation period as a threshold. And it was the main reason. <clears throat> and um, it, it was mainly used as a threshold according to the papers. So after the threshold is set, set we generate the trading signals. If the portfolio value exceeds the threshold, a sell signal is generated. So we expect the price of the first element to decrease and the price of the second element to increase. And if the value of the portfolio is below a certain minus threshold, then reversely, a buying signal is generated. Okay, so here's an example of portfolio series and its generated trading signals. As a plot in the slide, we will generate the trading signals 
for each of the pairs in every time st stamp in the trading period. Here, um, if you see the bottom of the plot, minus one means selling and one means buying signal. So after generating trading signals for all of the pairs we created in the pair selection period, in order to construct a portfolio based on that, for each time in the trading period, the portfolio only trade pairs with open positions. So the positions with one or minus one, not the zero. Okay, here are example of trading. I'll compare the four different pair selection method I introduced to you and trade with generated trading signals for each of the method. So here in this example, the stock universe is stocks in S&P 500 index with industry selection of IT, um, industrials, financials, and healthcare. And the formation period is from January 2018 to December 2018. And the trading period is from January 2019 to July, July 2019. And here's the results of the four different methods. So um, let's take a look at the table on the left first. And this shows pairs formed for each of the method. And like, obviously as they're using different criteria for pair selection, it results in different pairs of stocks. So then with these pairs, the plot on the right side, if you see the right side, <clears throat> shows equity curves for each of the method in the given period. Um, this is just a simple example and the results may vary depending on the stock universe or formation slash trading period setting. So you can test your own. So just in case you wanna test your own strategy, I'll share the code of our Arab lab in order to use this basic distance approach. As in the slide, this simple two lines of code can be can do the whole process from forming pairs to generating trading signals. There's some parameters you may adjust, such as the number of pairs like you want to select or the trading um, threshold, which is set as two standard deviations as default. And as it is very easy to follow and test all of these four different pair selection methods I mentioned today, please try out our, our lab module and try out different trading strategies to make your own one. Uh, this is the end of the basic distance approach. However, as this method is too simple, there can be some improvement to the approach. I think many of you have already noticed some limitations and probably came up with some improvements of it as well from your mind. So here's some pros and cons of each method, and I will show you some improvements and <clears throat> of all the methods. So um, let's see the pros first. The basic method is very simple. It's simple in calculation. The industry method is possible to catch the similar price movements of stock within the same industry group, which can slightly improve the performance of basic method. The variance method selects more profitable stocks than the basic method. And the zero crossings method is similar to the variance, but it also selects stocks which can be traded more often than the basic method. However, it has some cons. So as all the methods are pretty much simple and have a lot of limitations, like these cons here, <clears throat> there are some cons um, explained here. Pairs are selected only based on a pair of two stocks without considering others. Also, only the price movement of two stocks is considered in generating trading signals. And once pairs are selected in the formation period, no other stocks are considered to be traded in the trading, trading period, which may miss some possible opportunities for profits, which we do not want to miss. Therefore, a lot of consequent researches have been done, have been made to improve these methods. And these are some of them, which I will present in the following session, part two. So please stay. And we can apply quasi multivariate approach, both in selecting pairs and generating trading signals. Also, we may apply different pair selection methods, such as Pearson correlation, and not just considering the selected pairs in trading, but considering the whole universe of stocks in each time stamp of the trading period will help as well. Okay, so this is the end of my presentation and this is the reference um, for the slide. So you should go check the, out the papers if you want. And before we move on to the next session, we'll have a quick five to 10 minutes of Q&A. 
So please feel free to ask. Thank you for listening.